Hello, welcome to another Wardlaw workshop. My name's Matt. Every month, the Museums of the University of St Andrews and the Wardlaw Museum will be bringing you a project and experiment that you can do at home with a little bit of help from experts at the University of St Andrews. Now, a few weeks ago, we had a go at some drama and we got sent this amazing video by Angela and Vella from South Africa. Take a look at this. Mmm, cake. I love cake. You a cake. She won't give us any cake. There's a little piece of bread. Let's chop my head off. <laughs> and we'll take her head off. <sighs> Amazing. Well done. What are we going to be doing this week? Let's find out. People have been obsessed with space for a long time. Take a look at this silver ball, which comes from Thailand. It's from about the 1700s, and if you see around the edge of it, you'll see the signs of the zodiac. Those are patterns that people have created in the sky uh, using all the different stars. And it shows us that people were interested in space at that time in Thailand. And we've designed instruments to help us look at space. Look at this telescope designed by James Gregory, who at one point taught at the University of St Andrews in the 1600s. And finally, in the 20th century, we actually made it to space. And in the 1960s, the first man walked on the moon. Now take a look at this telegram. A telegram is a bit like a letter that's sent by telephone lines. Maybe it's a very early email. Um, and this is from NASA to a professor at the University of St Andrews, telling him that they were sending some moon rocks for him to study. Amazing. So how do we actually get to space? Well, we need a rocket, and that is this month's challenge. I want you to build a rocket and manage to launch it. Now, you might want to go back to our flying machine video where we thought about three of the four forces that act on something that flies. Lift that lifts something up, drag that pulls it back, and gravity that tries to pull it down. Uh, those are very important for rockets, but today we're going to think specifically about thrust. That's the force that thrusts something forward, and we'll need to think about that to get our rocket to launch. Rockets need a lot of thrust so they can escape the gravity of the Earth and get into outer space. How does it work? Well, rockets burn a lot of fuel. That creates a lot of gas that comes out of the bottom of your rocket and pushes it upwards. It's a bit like a balloon. If I let go of this now, the air will come rushing out and the balloon will fly away. Huh. Maybe we could try that to get our rocket to fly. So, I have my rocket tied to my balloon. Let's see if it flies. No. Now, if you've seen space shuttles, you'll see that the booster, the bit with the rocket fuel in, is much bigger than the space shuttle itself. So, I've tried again and my balloon's much bigger. Let's see if it works this time. Have a go at home and see if it works for you. Now, we've tried putting gas inside our rocket or inside a balloon tied to our rocket, but what if we tried it the other way? What if the force went upwards from the ground instead of downwards from the rocket? Did you know if you put Mentos inside Fizzy Pop, that pop will explode? Well, what about if we put our rocket on top of the exploding Fizzy Pop? Would our rocket fly? Let's find out. Now, I've got here my bottle of Fizzy Pop. It's ordinary lemonade. I need to find a way of getting my rocket to sit on top while I put the Mentos in. So I've fashioned this uh, cardboard tube that I can sit my rocket on top of, like that. And then underneath, I've got a little tab that I will pull out. The Mentos are sat on top of that tab. And when I pull it out, they'll go into the pop. And hopefully, my rocket will fly upwards. Why does pop explode when we drop our soft mint into it? Well, it's because our soft mint has lots of little pits on the surface. You might be able to feel them. When we drop it into the pop, all the bubbles that are suspended in the liquid get stuck on the side of it, collect on there, and then all go shooting up at once, and the pop goes with it. Now, I've only got one bottle of pop, so hopefully this works. This is real science. I've never actually tried this before. 
three, two, one. Hmm, should have tested the launch system before trying it. So, that didn't work, and I'm out of pop. But I did remember I have a tin of tonic, just for moments like this. I put the mints inside my rocket, and I'll put that upside down on top of the tin and see if that works. It's our last chance. Three, two, one. That's science. So none of our methods for launching our rocket worked, but that's science. Actually, the first stage often doesn't work. Now we have to ask why? And think about what we learned when we did flying machines. Our flying machines need to be light. So maybe if our rocket was lighter, it might fly. So I've made a lighter rocket, much lighter, and tied it to my balloon. Will it fly this time? Why don't you try some different ways and see if you can get your rocket to fly and remember your rocket needs to be light. And when you're launching your rocket make sure you check around you, you don't want it to hit anyone or break any windows. So space is a fascinating place and to help us find out more about galaxies Dr Anna Marie Wymans is going to help us. She's an astronomer here at the University of St Andrews. Hello, my name is Dr. Anne-Marie Wijmans and I'm an astronomer at the University of St. Andrews. Now, as an astronomer, I am very much interested in anything that is floating around in space. And you have to admit, there's a lot in space. There are planets, there are stars, we have the moon up in space, um, but we also have comets, we have asteroids, and we even have a space station floating around. What I do, I concentrate on galaxies. And galaxies are things like this one here. Or this one. Or what about this one? These are all pictures of galaxies that were taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. And you have to admit, they, they do look very pretty. Now, what is a galaxy? Well, galaxies are made of stars. Stars, like our own sun, they don't just float around in space all by themselves. They actually form groups with other stars that we, for, that we call galaxies. And it's a little bit like if you think of a star as a house, then a galaxy is a town, so made up of lots of houses or stars in this case. Now, if you then say, okay, I want to study galaxies, then one of the problems you have is that there are lots and lots and lots of different galaxies out there. And you have to start making sense of that all. Now, one way that we do that is by looking at pictures of galaxies, just like the ones that I just showed you of the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, the Hubble Space Telescope is named after an astronomer, Edwin Hubble. And he studied galaxies in the 1930s. And what he did is he looked at all different kinds of pictures of galaxies and he said, well, most galaxies either look like this one or they look like that one. And let's put those two galaxies next to each other. Can you see any differences between these two? As you can see, the one on the left is a very smooth galaxy. There is almost no structure there. And it's also very elliptical shaped. So we call those galaxies elliptical galaxies. Now, if you look at the galaxy on the right, okay, let's be honest, that galaxy is a lot more interesting. There's lots more going on there. Um, there's much more structure. You can see the spiral arms in there, right? Um, these galaxies are called spiral galaxies. And most of the galaxies in the universe are either a spiral galaxy or they are an elliptical galaxy. And our own galaxy, the Milky Way, is a spiral galaxy. Now what Edwin Hubble did is he said, I'm going to put all these galaxies on what we now call Hubble's tuning fork. And the ellipticals are all over here on the left. 
and the spiral galaxies are over there on the right. Now they call it a fork because at the end there are actually two spines if you look at them. Now the top one are normal spiral galaxies but on the bottom one Hubble said you know some spiral galaxies are a little bit different. They look like this one here. Now can you see what is in the center here? This galaxy has what we call a bar. It's a barred galaxy. And a bar is basically all the stars that are in the center that decide, you know what, we're going to make our own separate rectangular structure here and we're going to call that a bar. And that bar plays an important role in how that galaxy over time can change in shape. Now, these barred galaxies are at the bottom of this right-hand side of the Hubble tuning fork. So this is when we look at galaxies, how we can put them in a structure. We can say, okay, I just have a new galaxy here. I'm now going to look at where it fits on the Hubble and Tuning Fork. But now you may ask yourselves, okay, but are all these galaxies in the universe well behaved? Do they all fit on the Hubble Tuning Fork? And the answer is, well, no. Because we also have galaxies like this one. This is a very small galaxy, it's a dwarf galaxy, and it's therefore very irregular in shape, and it doesn't fit on the Hubble and Tuning Fork. And what about this one? It's actually two galaxies that had an accident. They collided and they're now merging together to form a new galaxy. There are some galaxies that you just can't put on the Tuning Fork, and we call those galaxies irregular galaxies. So that's basically like the leftovers that don't fit in. But to be completely honest, those irregular galaxies are often the most interesting one. So they do get a lot of attention from astronomers. I have a question for you. I would love to make a Hubble tuning fork of all your favorite galaxies. So if you want to take part, then make a drawing of your own favorite galaxy. It can be any galaxy type that you want. It can be an existing one, one that I showed you earlier, one that you maybe look up in a book or, uh, or online. It may also be a galaxy that you completely made up yourself because let's be honest, there are a lot of galaxies out there. We haven't seen them all. Um, so you may just as well invent one. When you have your galaxy finished, take a picture of it and send it to us. And we will over here make a Hubble tuning fork out of all the galaxies that you send us. Wow, I didn't know there were so many different types of galaxies. Amazing. When you've drawn your galaxy, you can email it to us at museumlearning at st-andrews.ac.uk and we will send it on to Anna-Marie to add to the Hubble tuning fork. And please also send us videos of you trying to launch your rockets. Maybe you'll do better than I did. See you next month. Bye-bye.